Hello, everyone, and welcome back to an all-new interview for the Cinefellas Podcast. That's right, Cinefellas, the only place where Batman will skip out on church for us and call it a Christian bail. Today, we have actor and Frank Sinatra fanboy Cody Hewer of the film The 16th Episode, a horror movie that focuses on some YouTubers who hope to gain a new audience by streaming a satanic ritual. Hey, Cody, what's up, buddy? Hey, hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. So congratulations on the 16th episode. It's a real cool film. Thanks, thanks. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I like the idea of the YouTubers coming across a twisted ritual. It was really fun to watch. That's good to hear. It was it was a lot of fun making it, especially uh, doing it overseas in a uh, a country I've never been before. Yeah. So, what was it like shooting overseas, man? Um, it was it was an experience I'm not used to. Um, most of the times when I've done film, I've done you know I've done during the day scenes during the day. And most of these scenes were done in uh, the house at like uh, from like 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. But they had uh, set up the house and the lighting so that it looked like it was during the afternoon. So that was really, really interesting. Um, and and being one of one of two Americans in a, a, a Muslim Moroccan country was. It was a big culture shock. It was really cool, but it was also kind of a big culture shock. All right, man. Uh, that's pretty interesting. And, you know, this movie actually made me think back to a lot of scary stuff, you know, that I've seen on YouTube and social media in general. So are there any real-life si- scary situations that, like, happened on social media that inspired, you know, this film or one of the, your character traits? Um, the only thing I can think of that that um, really kind of influenced me was uh, the idea of how you have YouTubers that are, every time they do a shoot, everything's cut perfectly to the point where um, you don't see a mistake. And with this character, I felt like I was, I had to do the opposite. Um, Because if you do, if you do a show that's completely cut and everything is perfect, you don't actually get to see um, the 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 improv. You don't get to see the real moments. You you see staged moments. And so I think with this with this show, um, the idea of everything being shown made the experience a little more real. Right, because scary. You know, it's social media and to me is kind of a scary thing in general. Right. So do you feel like, you know, those documentary styles of horror films are more effective than, you know, purely fictional horror films like, uh, you know, Saw, for instance? I think they, uh, they definitely give people the, um, the creativity to explore. Um, one of the things I found very interesting about the story was, um, the, the idea of the, um, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking. There's one moment uh, in the script that Jerome wrote that was based on real events when it came to um, the the child possession that's later shown up in the film. I didn't realize that until much later that it was based on an actual account, an actual exorcism. And I found that to be unbelievably terrifying. Just that idea that that something that we were recreating had actually happened. And I think stories that delve into the history of things forces audience members to not only um, see that this kind of thing actually happened, it makes it more relatable, makes it a little more terrifying. Um, If they're anything like me, they want to research and do uh, homework on it and see what is real and what was fabricated and just the whole idea of something like this actually taking place was terrifying. And I think that makes it much more terrifying than fiction stories because fiction stories, you can, you you can definitely take things 
and create a world around it. But if you take it from real life and put it on the screen, put it on the page, it's even more terrifying, in my opinion. No, definitely. I understand where you're coming from. And I'm glad you actually mentioned the script because I know that, you know, when you're in the creative process and writing a script, you know, sometimes the script can change so many times. So how does the 16th episode, you know, stay true to the original concept and how close is it to the original concept? Uh, the original concept, um, it actually changed pretty frequently. Um, the three of us, I know, I know with Anar and I, um, we worked off, off each other so well that if, if he had a moment of improv, he would throw it at me and I would throw it right back at him. And we just kept playing with it. We weren't really afraid to explore. Mm -hmm. And Jerome, I think, saw that and decided to, um, because when he was around us, he started, um, when Jerome was around us, he kind of noticed that we would play off of each other. We uh, weren't afraid to explore. And I think at that moment, his creative juices started flowing. And we all kind of made this a big collaboration. All right. um, I noticed from the very beginning, the the story had definitely changed over time. It went from a simple possession and an exorcism to a um, historical fiction story. Um, there were definitely moments in the in the shoot that Jerome would give us a set bullet points of this is what I want you to talk about. I'm not going to give you the actual dialogue, but if you can say this, if you can say this part, and if you can say this part, um, it turned out to be a majority of it was improv. All right. And just out of curiosity, who is the scariest person in the cast in reality? I would say Anar. He uh, he could be pretty terrifying. I mean, he's a sweetheart individually, but if he had to be terrifying, uh, yeah, he would be the the terrifying one. Has he done anything like creepy on set? <laughs> Let's see. Did we do anything creepy on set? Um. Well, I I would read. Because the entire film we shot during the night, um, it was when we weren't actually on set and we would hear things, that would be terrifying. Um, there was one scene I did where I had to scream upstairs in the bedroom over and over and over and yelling for Anar, and Anar was downstairs working on something completely different, and he just said, I, I, I had to stop listening because I had no idea what was happening. But I think the mystery of not knowing what was happening to you, it was terrifying. It was blood curdling. It was, it was just horrible. Um, there were even moments I would read. Um, I only had one book with me, and it was The Exorcist. I guess for some reason I thought when I was in Morocco there would be bookstores with books in English, and I was completely wrong. And so during my downtime, I would either write on my own um, stories or my own books, but I would read The Exorcist. And so at like three in, three in the morning, I'm reading about The Exorcist while in the other room they're filming the 16th episode. You know, I think a lot of it was um, our own imagination kind of uh, playing with us. Okay. And, you know, I, I actually recently saw your website, and it says that you're also a theater actor. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, oh. I... I've been um, a theater actor since about 2004, almost 15 years. All right, and what's the difference between, you know, stage acting versus film acting, and which one would you rather do? Stage acting is much different in the sense that you get an immediate applause from the audience. You immediately know if a joke is working. You know immediately if um, a song worked or... Um, you know, you can just feel it. It's it's a it's energy. Um, when it comes to to film, it's I, I like film. Even though I was raised in the theater, I like film much more because I don't 
I, I feel more comfortable being natural. And when you're on the, when you're in theater, you have to play it up. You have to, um, you know, you, you have to project it to the guy in the back row. And with film, you can just be as subtle as possible because there will be a mic to pick you up and a camera to get your facial features. Like that's what I prefer. And it's funny. I didn't actually start doing film until two, three years ago. But I felt like my theater training had trained me for um, the films. And, and that, that's what I noticed the biggest about it. For me, it was just the naturality. Um, I also liked, um, with theater, you typically have to have the entire script in the back of your mind. You have to have that memorized, at least your part. And you need to know the cue lines of everybody else. You need to know the entire story. Um, so there's a constant mode of memorization. With film, you only really need to know what's going to be shot that day. And uh, it, it's, 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 not as, it's not as much as a, of a mind, um, you know, you don't have to remember everything. You just remember that moment. And I think that's the thing with theater. Theater actors, they teach you about being present, but it's kind of hard to be present when you have so much stuff that you're having to remember. Film, it's easier to be present because you're literally only remembering that moment. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I never really thought of it like that. And, you know, I actually saw on your Instagram page that your vinyl collection, and it seems like you're a big music buff. <laughs> yeah, so, I kind of listen to all different kinds of stuff. So what's your favorite song and your favorite I, artist? Uh, um, well, I, I grew up listening to Frank Sinatra and um, Dean Martin and the Rat Pack and um, those easy listening kind of big band songs. That's kind of um, what I've always been a fan of. And that's, that's kind of my easy go-to music when, um, I don't know, like if, if I'm nervous or if I'm going into something that I'm, you know, the only one there... Um, when I was flying to Morocco, when I was on the third plane, I didn't know anybody. I knew nobody. Um, and that was, all I was really given was the script and a plane ticket. I didn't know who I was going to meet. I didn't know Ana. I didn't know Rebecca. I only knew Jerome and uh, Yasmina. I didn't know anybody else. And so on the flights, I would listen to Sinatra or I'd listen to Michael Bublé or I'd listen to any kind of... Uh, you know, songs from the 50s, the, the, that kind of big band sound, and it, it mellowed me out. It, it helped me uh, relax. So that's kind of been my go-to ever since I as, ever since I can remember. I love Frank Sinatra. Can you sing a line from a Frank Sinatra song? I know you're a singer. Um, I've got the world on a string, sitting on a rainbow, got that string around my finger. What a world, what a life, I'm in love. All right, nice. That's nice, man. Woo! Thanks. That's me giving you a standing <laughs> ovation. Actually, awesome, thank you. There's actually an old lady walking a dog looking at us. <laughs> done. Right. Well, she's staring at us. Well, she's gone now. I was going to tell her about the movie, but she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, without giving anything away, what's your favorite line of dialogue from the movie? Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, we just have two minutes left. Thank you. No problem. Alright. Um, 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 it's, it's hard to, to really pin it down to like one of my favorite lines is, um, um, a lot of it was just improv stuff that we would, any, any dialogue that was me and Anar bantering back and forth, it, it's those kind of moments because some of the times it was off the cuff some of the times it was on uh the, the actual printed page um but I, I i think there was one moment um there's one moment when i'm when i'm uh strapped to the bed because i had you know been knocked out um and anar runs in he's like what are you doing why, why are you tied up i'm like don't worry about it don't don't worry about it and just this idea of constantly trying to get him to not look at what was happening 
I, 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 we just had constant dialogue where we would banter, and it's it's really hard for me to put down which was my favorite. So, um, majority was just the improv. That was my favorite lines. All right, well, because that was the moments that we were real. Oh, definitely, man. Well, thank you for your time, Cody. I know you have to go, and I just want to say congratulations on being a part of this cool project, man. Well deserved. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for the interview. All right, no problem. And is there anything you would like to let our listeners know last minute, where they can find you on social media, how they can see the film? Uh, yeah, you can just look look me up on CodyWayneHoyer.com, um, C-O-D-Y-W-A-Y-N-E-H-E-U-E-R, Dot com and that's uh, typically where you can find updates on me. I try to do Instagram, but I'm horrible when it comes to Facebook. Um, but I definitely try to keep things up with, with Instagram. All right, well, thanks again, man. Take it easy, all right? All right, thank you. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. The 16th episode has a U.S. release date on June 28th, 2019. Thanks for listening, everyone. Hit that subscribe button, and if it's not too much to ask, just do one more thing. Check out cinefellas.com, because over there you'll find movie reviews, movie news, TV news, and a whole lot more. Trust me. Be sure to also check us out over at Instagram at cinefellas, and over on Twitter at the cinefellas. And the only reason we ask this from you is because, like Frank Sinatra, we've got you under our skin. And we hope to see you next time. Catch you later.